you, if, if you had to bet about that, no, no one will bet about having paper being able to be, to be recorded. Living treasures of music sheets, banknotes, letters and diaries survived because they were stuffed away inside leather bags, protected from the elements. Today, these personal writings remind us of lives lost. Roy sends best wishes. Wishes he was traveling like you. I wish you prosperity wherever you go. Hello, Roy. Your sincerely. Wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hope to hear from you in the New Year. I am just living Sick. from day to day for the time when you will be back. I could not be untrue, even if I wanted to. When we put the picture together, when we look at the objects that these people had in their final moments, it gives us, I think, a greater understanding of just exactly who they were. And by knowing the characters in the drama, you get a much better insight into the, the great drama of that night. In all, some 5,000 Titanic artifacts have been recovered. Many can now be seen in exhibits throughout the world. Each reaches out in an intimate human way to keep the memory of Titanic alive. The Titanic herself can be considered the ultimate artifact. But the ship can never be raised, never preserved. And unlike the artifacts conserved in France, Titanic is disappearing rapidly with no practical chance at restoration. At the Titanic site, Roy Colomar is retrieving his rustical traps. There may be clues to Titanic's ultimate fate inside these tiny vials. And maybe we're approaching the time when the Titanic is going to become very fragile. And uh, we need to know how fragile she is becoming. The rustical structures are extremely delicate, and they are collected gingerly. One day, Titanic II may crumble away. Back in his lab, Colomar is quick to get to work. Etchings in a strip of 35 millimeter film show signs of bacteria. These trails were created as the bacteria ate the gelatin in the film. For Colomar, these colorful etchings are a sign of vigorous life at the Titanic site. Colomar discovers many different kinds of bacteria. The solutions in the red cap tubes show discoloration, proving the existence of iron-eating bacteria. Colomar confirms that iron bacteria are devouring Titanic. It's a, a complicated uh, living system, and it's not just one species. 
We've already isolated a number of community structures of bacteria from there. Inside the hard shell of the rusticle, Colomar has found bacteria, fungi, and other molds. He injects nutrients into a rusticle to keep it alive. He hopes to discover how they create their unique outer shell. The anatomy of the rusticle is complicated. These life forms embody a web of water channels, ducts, and cavities. The amount of surface area packed into the rusticles is astonishing. The science of the rusticles is fascinating from the point of view that the rusticle has such a huge surface area. If I took 650 tons of rusticles on the bow of the Titanic, spread the surface area, it would cover 23,000 square miles of surface area. So essentially we're seeing that there's a complex community we don't understand all of the components. This is a new part of science that we're only just beginning to explore, the edge of yet another universe. Colomar extracts some of Titanic's iron each time he dries out a sample of rusticle. Judging from the amount of iron collected, he believes that as much as 20% of the bow has been consumed by the organisms. And from the philosophical point of view, what I see there is we're seeing the inevitability. Everything recycles, absolutely everything. Today, the story of Titanic is moving into her final chapter. The most luxurious ocean liner in the world is slowly disintegrating, transforming to dust and iron ore. By exploring Titanic before it's too late, the story of her tragedy is kept alive. In the light of morning, the survivors of the Titanic disaster found themselves adrift in the cold North Atlantic. Seven hundred and five people had survived the cold and dark in lifeboats. Twenty-eight men stood until they were rescued on this upside-down boat, often huddled together in prayer. The passenger ship Carpathia rescued many survivors that morning. While the rest of the world waited to hear what had happened, most survivors were silent, quiet, stunned. They would complete their voyage to New York, but nothing had turned out as planned. In Titanic's giant berth, her lifeboats were placed where the great ship should have been. A place of joyous arrival was instead a reminder of tragic loss. Tragically, a lot of people lost their lives on the Titanic. And I don't think we should dwell on the tragedies so much as learn from the tragedies so that it doesn't happen again. And the Titanic maintains an elegance as if she's saying to us, don't avoid me, but learn from me.
Don't avoid tragedies, but learn from tragedies.